Hey everybody, I'm Howard. That's Adder. And this is Adder's Retirement Corner. Welcome. So I want to talk today about um, <laughs> JP Morgan sounding the alarm uh, about uh, withdrawal rates in retirement. And this points out something larger. This, this is an article from March 5th on Yahoo. So just, just a couple days ago. And the title of the article is why JP Morgan says to avoid withdrawing this much from your retirement accounts. Um, I'm going to point out some hazards here and some things you have to be aware of. And the reason why the financial media may not be your friend. So, you know, you have to parse these things out a little bit. So this, this article says, J.P. Morgan Chase says ongoing inflation and an outlook for sharply lower returns for investors means that retirees should toss the long-standing 4% rule. Now, as we all know, the 4% rule came out of the Trinity study and a uh, Bill Bengen study that said the worst case scenario over a 30-year retirement with a portfolio of 50% S&P and 50% Treasury bonds is you can withdraw 4% every year adjusted each year for inflation. So you start at 4% and then if it's a 3% inflation, you do 4.03 in essence. So if it was 40,000, it's now $41,200 a second year and so on and so on and so on. And you'll safely make it through retirement. Um, there's a lot of controversy about that. Uh, you know, eventually bang and change it to 4.7% if you add in some small cap stocks uh, you know, others have said, you know, why plan for 30 years? You know, take that for what it is. If, if you think that's safe for you, do it. If you don't, don't. Uh, you know, if you're 70, maybe you want to take out 5%, maybe 5.5%. I'm not telling you what to do. I tend to be a little bit more conservative. So, you know, uh, you know what's best for you. You know how long you might live. You might not know. If you don't know, um, it's safer to you know cover the risk of longevity and maybe go for a lower withdrawal rate. Uh, the important thing here is to be flexible. So if you start out at 5% and the markets crash or inflation is high or both and you can survive on 3%, you know, that, that's the buffer you put in there for yourself. So to go on with this article, um, so it says instead, the big bank advises drawing down more than two or three percent of your nest egg each year. <laughs> uh, consider working with a financial advisor as you plan for worry-free uh, retirement. So I, I don't think J.P. Morgan said two or three percent. I, I think they probably put a, a more solid number on that. Um, you know that that's extremely low. Uh, so. Let's, let's go on here a little bit. Um, J.P. Morgan also advises retiring the 4% rule because prospects for lower returns and higher inflation, and this is a quote, that all economists now see on the horizon means the 4% rule could be a prescription for serious financial trouble. Well, not all economists now see on the horizon. That, that's simply not true. Um, it's quoted... Uh, again, I, I didn't see the J.P. Morgan report. I searched for that and can't find it. Uh, you know, I'll keep looking, but you know, never do all economists say the same thing. Never do all scientists say the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, economics is a, a tricky science. It's like all meteorologists saying the same thing. You know, it's going to rain at four o'clock. They all say that. Well, there's variability in this. Uh, so. You know, again, this is this is the financial media. They're quoting it, which which bothers me, um, but I doubt they said that. Um, so it says while the S and P uh, earned an average ten percent over the last ten years, the bank's recently published long-term capital market assumption forecasts a sixty forty portfolio. So we're no longer talking about fifty fifty. We're talking sixty percent stocks, forty percent bonds, uh, returning just four point three percent. Um, and it says long-term capital market assumption. I don't know what long-term is in that sense. Is it 10 years? Is it 20 years? Is it 30 years? Now, this isn't an uncommon theme. Um, you know, a lot of people have said with, uh, you know, price to earnings ratios and stocks so high in the U.S., uh, it's likely that they'll return less over coming years. 
uh, bonds were extremely high. That's, you know, that's been shaved off a little bit. Whether they'll return their historical norm is questionable. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to ever try to predict where uh, interest rates are going or inflation. Um, so they're saying, uh, <laughs> this, this is a ridiculous example, uh, there is a nearly 100% likelihood that a 60-year-old with 30 million taxable portfolio, you know, and you can make that 3 million or 300,000, the number doesn't really matter, uh, a 60-year-old with a $30 million taxable portfolio would run out of money if she spent 4% of her portfolio for the next 30 years. So what they're saying is it's a 100% failure rate. And that's just, I mean, nobody says that. I mean, that's just simply not true. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of shocked at this, but you know, that's, that's what it is. So this, this is actually, then you find out, at, you know, as you get to the bottom of the article, that this, is, this came from a smart asset blog. And smart asset is a financial site and I find them uh, extremely dubious, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't put much faith in what they say. Uh, I find a lot of incorrect information there. Um, I think what it comes down to is you're going to click on a link and get a financial advisor. And that's all they're looking to do. Hey, here's something to worry about. You need to talk to somebody. Click on this link. Get a financial advisor. We'll get a fee. I'm speculating here, but that's my concern. Um, now that's not to say, and again, other people have suggested the 4% rate may not work. Um, most famously, Wade Fowle, one of the foremost authorities on investing and withdrawing in retirement, has, you know, maybe a year, two years, I, I forget how long ago it was, went down to 2.7%. Um, ben Felix was also suggested, or I think Wade Fowle went to 2.4%, Ben Felix went to 2.7%. Um, this was a couple of years ago, uh, you know, as we were looking at that really high inflation rate. Um, you know, this isn't unprecedented in the fact that in 1968, if you look over the last 100 years, uh, you, you had a really good chance of running out of money, uh, not 100%, but close to 100% over the next 30 years on a 50-50 portfolio. But the whole point here is don't just blindly trust the financial media. Don't blindly trust YouTubers. Do some research. Go look at other articles. Listen to other YouTubers. Get a consensus. You know, you can pretty easily get a feeling that this information is just bad. It's just bad information. And I'm not saying the 4% rule is, is solid. It's in gold. You know, it's, it's, it's etched in stone. It's going to work 100%. It may not. And again, be flexible. If you're withdrawing 4%, and suddenly inflation surges or the market has a big drop, again, take 3%. You know, be flexible enough so that you have some other money where you don't have to withdraw that much or you can adjust your expenses. Don't take your five to $7,000 trip this year. You know, don't plan it that tightly. You know, if you have to absolutely take 4% plus inflation every year and there's a hiccup, you know, and you're very young when you're retired, you could run into some problems. So, you know, there's, you know, there's Otter looking for quarters under the, the couch cushions and, you know, help us get through retirement, you know. <laughs> he understands how expensive it is to, to have him, so he's looking to earn his keep. Um, and, and I don't know how he feels about the 4% rule. We'll, we'll talk about that. So, again, um, be careful what you read. Uh, the last thing I want to point out, and this, this is the best part. Uh, like I said, this was the March 5th article in Yahoo Finance. And there's a link to Smart Asset, and you click on that link, and you see this is actually an article from September of last year, and it was updated from an earlier time. So they were making this prediction probably almost a year ago. Things have changed since then. Inflation has come down. The market's done pretty well, you know. So that, you know that long-term scenario for stocks may be different. Bonds, uh, certainly the long-term scenario bonds are different because they've they've fallen so much since then. Um, but these are things you have to look at, you know, careful who you listen to. Uh, you know, we, we, I, th I think we all know that, but that's a good lesson. So tell me what you think about this. You know, we, we've talked about the 4% rule before, you know, if you want, tell me what you're using, tell me what you think, you know, is it, is it a crock? Should it be five or 6% or, or more or less? Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. 
Please subscribe, please like, and please comment. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.